Hey kids, today we're going to talk about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And as Easter, pro uh, Easter Sunday approaches, I know you're going to hear about the empty tomb and the resurrection, uh, but we have to know how Jesus got to the tomb. And we're going to talk about uh, Jesus Christ being crucified and what that means and, and how that happened and what that means for us. So uh, first of all, when you hear the word crucifixion, it sounds like a, like a, a scary big word, and it is scary. It's not a fun thing. Uh, uh, being crucified was a terrible uh, thing that, that people had to go through. And when, you, when we talk about crucifixion, we have to talk about the cross because that's the tool that was used in a crucifixion uh, was, a, was a cross. And it was used by the Romans in Jesus' time uh, to execute or to kill criminals. Uh, so when a criminal would be found guilty of a crime punishable by death, uh, they would be placed on this cross. They would be spikes drove through their wrist right here and, and through their heel bones in their leg in their feet and they would hang on this cross until they suffocated and died and it was a terrible agonizing uh, painful way to die uh, nothing pleasurable about it uh, totally humiliating they would strip you down most of the time uh, people would mock you they would spit on you they would uh, hit you and all that before you even placed before the soldiers would even place you onto the cross and we see the, the story of the crucifixion of Jesus in all four Gospels uh, of the Bible. And we know that Jesus endured all these things. We know that Jesus, uh, once he was arrested in the garden, uh, that he was brought in front of Pilate, uh, that he was uh, uh, accused of, of blasphemy, that he was uh, accused of saying that he was Christ, the Son of God, in, in which he really was. They just, the, the Jewish people couldn't see it. They, they couldn't realize that the Messiah was right in front of them the whole time. And as Jesus was arrested, uh, he was beaten with a whip and he was, he was spit on and the soldiers mocked him and the crowd mocked him and, they, and they, they said terrible things to him. And then they ultimately made him carry his own cross uh, a certain ways up the hill until he couldn't bear it no more uh, to the place that he would be nailed on the cross between two thieves that deserved at that time to die. Um, Jesus was innocent. He was, he was found guilty of, of nothing that was punishable by death, yet the Jewish people chose to have him crucified in place of Barabbas, a convicted murderer at the time. Um, and I know you're probably thinking, well, if Jesus was innocent, then why did he go to the cross? Why did, why did Jesus have to die on the cross if he, was, if he was not guilty of any crime? And we have to realize, and, and it starts with, God hates sin. God cannot stand sin. Uh, looking back in the Old Testament, we see the law of Moses. When, you, when God's children would sin in the Old Testament, and even up to the point uh, where until Jesus went to the cross, they would have to offer a sacrifice to pay for the sin that they committed, uh, whether it be lying to somebody, whether it be uh, doing something you weren't supposed to do, stealing something, uh, hurting somebody. When, when, you, when you ask forgiveness uh, from God, then you had to offer a sacrifice in place of your sin. And most of the time it was an animal sacrifice. Uh, and we see in the Old Testament that they use lambs a lot. And, and Jesus Christ himself is referred to uh, the Lamb of God because here's how Jesus gets to the cross and why Jesus had to go to the cross is because Jesus was the, the spotless sacrifice that would atone for our sins. Uh, finally, there was a sacrifice good enough that we wouldn't have to offer lambs and, and goats and bulls and doves uh, to God. Um, God sent, just like in John 3 16, we see that God so loved the world, that's me and you, that was uh, the people back then and that's the people to come. He loved the whole world, not just a certain race, creed, or color. He loves all of us. That he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, stepped down out of heaven, heaven willingly and, and knowing what was going to happen um, to, be, to be the lamb the spotless sacrifice for our sins. So I know it's kind of hard to, to grasp why this innocent man that, that lived uh, 33 years on earth and never sinned one time 
would be nailed to a cross in the most uh, uh, torturous way to die that there is uh, when, he, when he did nothing wrong. And, and the only answer to that is that Jesus loved us that much that he was willing uh, to go to the cross and to die for our sins. So uh, it, I know it's hard to, to fathom why somebody would do that, but we have to know the love that Jesus had for us uh, was so much that he knew that without fulfilling the will that the Father had given him to do, which was to go to the cross and to die for our sins, uh, that we wouldn't have a relationship with God. But since Jesus Christ did uh, go all the way to the cross, since he bore the weight of, weight of our sins, the sin of the world on his back, we now have a mediator between us and God, and that's, that's Christ Jesus. We now can say, we can cry out to God with our, with our prayers and, and with our uh, repentance. And we can say, God, forgive me of my sins. Guess what? They're forgiven because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Our sins are covered because of the blood that Jesus Christ uh, shed on the cross. So I just want to encourage you today. Um, I know that, that it's not a fun subject to talk about, uh, but it's uh, a... Uh, a uh, huge part of our Christian faith is to realize what Jesus Christ did for us. If, if Jesus Christ didn't shed his blood, we wouldn't have forgiveness of sins and therefore we couldn't have a relationship with God. So just remember what the enemy meant for evil. These, these Roman uh, soldiers obviously came up with this thing as a means of torture. God completely turned that around and he turned it into a way for us to have a relationship with him. Not only a relationship with him, but eternal life with him. So we, uh, the rest of the verse in John 3, 16, uh, that none shall perish, but we should all have eternal life or everlasting life. So um, I did, again, I just want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, just know that God loves you. Know that Jesus loves you enough that he went to the cross for you and that he died for you and that our sins are forgiven if we accept this gift uh, that he has so freely given to us. We can't, we can't buy forgiveness. We can't work uh, enough for forgiveness. We have to ask for it. We have to ask God to forgive us of our sins, turn away from our sins. We have to confess that we're a sinner, and then we have to trust God and believe in God that he is uh, just and uh, righteous to forgive us of those sins. So, uh, again, as Easter Sunday approaches, we're going to hear about the tomb and, and the resurrection of Christ, but we have to know how Jesus got to the tomb. And he got to the tomb uh, by bearing the weight of the world's sin on his back on the cross, uh, and, he, and he hung there until he died. So, uh, again, uh, a good memory verse for this. I know y'all will probably know it, but uh, just to go over it again, John three sixteen. Memorize it uh, and, and, just, and just stand on God's promises that... Uh, he loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son uh, to die for you so that we'd have eternal life. Thank you and God bless.